Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. Uh, my name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 189, I'm going to talk a little bit about the architectural quantum concept, but also some of the trade-offs involved. Uh, you may be noticing my shirt. I decided anytime I need to talk about trade-offs as a core piece of it, I'm actually going to wear my architecture shirt, which says, of course, it depends. <laughs> you can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday at my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. Speaking of lessons, if we go in the Wayback Machine all the way back to lesson 138. I talked about the architectural quantum concept and also something called dynamic quantum entanglement, how we tend to entangle systems unknowingly, uh, creating dependencies between them. Well, in this lesson, I'm going to offer up a very quick review of that architectural quantum, but show you some of the trade-offs involved with using or forming architectural quanta. So in the Building Evolutionary Architectures book by Neil Ford, Rebecca Parsons, and Patrick Kwa, uh, they identified this concept of an architectural quantum, which we later refined in our book, Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. Uh, basically, it's an independently deployable artifact with high functional cohesion and synchronous dynamic coupling. But this doesn't mean a service. An independently deployable artifact means an independently deployable portion of the system including all of the things needed for that functionality to work. That includes the user interfaces, services, gateways, the database, uh, brokers, all of that stuff that has high functional cohesion. And all of it is coupled synchronously uh, inside that architectural quantum. Now, the revolutionary aspect of this uh, that uh, Neil, Rebecca, and Patrick had identified and discovered is that architectural characteristics, those things we've been looking at at the past couple of lessons, live at an architectural quantum level. And I want to show you an example of this and also the trade-offs of this. So in order to illustrate a solid concrete example. Uh, we're going to use uh, something called the SysOp Squad. This was the architectural, ka architectural kata uh, that we identified in our book, Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. Uh, this is a trouble ticket system where if customers buy electronics, uh, they can also purchase a support plan. If they have an issue, uh, the customer can register with this site, uh, submit a problem ticket, and our customer facing us experts, those are the SysOp squad, uh, will come to your home or office and fix your problem. Let me show you the architecture for this, and then we'll analyze the architectural quantum and the trade offs with that. So let's say we have a customer, myself. <laughs> I interact with a web based user interface to be able to log in to be able to also uh, update my customer profile and my support plans and my address and all that kind of stuff. And both of these separately deployed services share the same database. But I can also create tickets through this website. So I create a ticket and now we have the SysOp squad. So what happens that ticket creation when a ticket gets created asynchronously is sent to a ticket router. Uh, that ticket router basically finds an expert and routes that ticket to their mobile device on their iPhone. Now that expert will go out to the field, fix the problem, and then mark the ticket as complete, which kind of ends the whole process. And all three of these separately deployed services all share the same database. Now behind the scenes, we've got our manager, that would be Neil over there, which uses a separate user interface to do operations reporting of all the various financial reports, expert reports, forecasting, and so on. When we take a look at this system, 
It is a distributed architecture, but how many separate parts are there to it? In other words, if we think about that definition of an architectural quantum, independently deployable part of the system held together with synchronous dynamic coupling. Now, in, in Lesson 138, I showed you that dynamic quantum entanglement with the use of async and synchronous communication. So looking at this, what architectural quanta, which is plural for quantum, do we have here? Totally separate, independent parts of the system. Well, certainly the easy one here is, of course, the operations reporting. <laughs> we see that the interface, the service, and the database are completely independent from all other parts. It doesn't depend on anything else in the system. We might also take a look here at our customer facing area here, uh, the customer login and profile with that corresponding user interface. Um, this looks like that might be part of, a separate part of the system. As a matter of fact, we'd like the whole back end piece, the routing and completion, to all be a separate part of the system, separately deployable, no synchronous coupling or dependency with any other parts. And that kind of leaves ticket creation to kind of be also another customer facing piece. So we might say, oh, there's four architectural quanta here. But if we look at the definition, we have synchronous dynamic coupling, which binds those architectural quanta together. In other words, ticket creations needed for that interface and that customer, oh, which means that I showed in lesson 138, that synchronous call entangles those two quanta into a single architectural quantum. But we also notice ticket creation has a dependency on a database used by these other services. Even though there's an asynchronous call right here between ticket creation and router, which does separate architectural quanta because they're not dependent on each other, that's async. But because of the database dependency, that now forms a single architectural quantum, which means that even though we have a distributed architecture, ultimately everything is entangled and this becomes a single unit of architecture. Hence, this is where the characteristics live. They need to be shared between these because of those dependencies. How do we fix this problem? Well, one way to address this would say, hmm, well, this this line right here, of course, sort of bothers me. So in order to form a separate architectural quantum, what if I created a new user interface for ticket creation and now had a separately deployed user interface to create tickets versus maintain my customer profile and log in? Well, if I do that now, customer functionality is completely independent of everything else. That is its own architectural quantum, separate from all of this. So that is one way we can do this. And now we now have two architectural quanta. Well, this is an interesting exercise because now we get to the crux of this whole topic in this lesson. And that is, should we do this? And the answer on my shirt says, it depends. Because now we have to analyze the trade-offs of doing so. In other words, is it worthwhile having two separate architectural quanta, each owning its own set of architectural characteristics, versus disrupting the user experience by having the complexities of two separate user interfaces, and maybe even the complexities of synchronizing the session state between those two separate deployment units on the interface. And this, this is, it depends, should we do this? It depends on which is more important, the user experience or the reasons for actually creating those two separate deployable units of architecture. Well, there's another way we could have solved this problem. So let's go back and say, no, <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't want to disrupt the user experience. 
Um, so one other way to maybe do this is to say, wait a minute, ticket creation there in the middle really is customer facing. Although it's ticketing, it really involves the customer. So how can I make that a separate quantum? Well, what we can do is create a ticket creation database. And now ticket creation talks only to that data, which means that now, unfortunately, we'd have to have some sort of synchronization process behind the scenes, a synchronous between creation and all the other ticketing backend functionality. So this would, in fact, create two separate architectural quanta. It would actually break those apart. So now ticket creation, customer profile, and login are all of our customer facing operations. Those need to be highly available, scalable, responsive, fault tolerant. Whereas our second quantum here is more back end. We have only a few experts, so we don't need the scalability, the fault tolerance, the reliability that we need for our external customers. That makes sense. But let's take a look at my shirt. It depends. Because what are the trade-offs associated with this? Now what we're talking about is a good customer experience, separate front end, back end, parts of the system because of this async, which are completely separate. One can go down and the other one still lives. But the trade-off is data consistency and data integrity. So these are some of the trade-offs that we face when we look at an architectural quantum. Uh, this concept, everyone, is incredibly important for the partitioning of our systems and understanding the dependencies between complex systems. And when some problem happens way down the line, it ends up impacting us over here because of those dependencies, because of those quantum. So. This is an important concept. What I'm trying to drive in this particular lesson is take this concept to heart, but understand the corresponding trade-offs to make that happen. So this has been lesson 189, the architectural quantum and the corresponding trade-offs associated with those. I know a fairly complex, sort of deep architectural topic, but one that is important because Try to be pragmatic about everything because everything in software architecture is a trade-off. <laughs> so thank you so much for listening and stay tuned in two more Mondays uh, for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.